All right, welcome to this great webinar. Um, hope you're gonna enjoy it. It's the second leg of the uh, the series, actually. So today we're gonna talk about uh, the collection, of course, but a little bit more and shows us into the factory design utilities in the chem stuff. My name is Mark Soro. I am from Autodesk. I'm a technical specialist. And I'm from Montreal, so you're going to have to bear with my funny accent. Um, throughout the webinar, if there's any questions, please, uh, you can use the chat window. And um, don't be afraid to get in touch with us afterwards if you digest the 125,000 words I'm going to say in about 45 minutes. Uh, you can always reach out to us. So I'm going to record this. Uh, it's actually recording, so my apology. And um, well, let's uh, get started. So, the collection, a great new novelty from Autodesk, uh, gives us all the clues that we need. I don't know about you, but I come from the drawing table. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, we started in college with the drawing table, which gave us a little sense of what was, uh, you know, drafting back in the days. But uh, it soon. Uh, went on to AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD 14. So this is then, this is now. Uh, that was then, this is now. This, this this is incredible. The day and age we live in with all the technology that we have, it is very, very interesting and inspiring as well. So now it is time to innovate, you know. And this is, those four are questions that we hear from customers a lot. And we also, also say to ourselves, you know, it could be in a day-to-day -day life or in a business life, but how can we innovate? How can we improve performance how can we achieve something faster how can we get more out of what we have and it's always you know faster better more always but it starts not only with the idea but with the tools that we have now what's interesting and i'm sure i don't see your hands but i'm sure i, I would get a bunch of hands up in the air if i asked you know how many times have you produced a part that was not the latest and greatest version how many times do you have to ask a colleague about, do you have that file that's on your desktop somewhere? So what's very interesting and what's vital is not only to use the same common tool set, but it's to share information and to collaborate, but it's always to have the single source of truth, always the same file data set. So if we can have all if we can all work with the same file data set then it's easy to collaborate to share and use the same tool set so this is the collection uh this is the collection today uh as you know if you're um if you're just like myself geeky enough you know that we change the collection a lot uh recently we just added a hsm and also nashon in there so the collection is a great set of tools that will allow you to produce uh, better, faster, and and get more out of your machine. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. So, of course, in those collections, there's a, something, there's a little thing for everyone, but we can all use it. Now, let me rephrase that. You know, most of the time, engineers, they will use Inventor or AutoCAD. And an analyst or someone that's a little bit more into FEA or simulation, they could use Nastro and NCAD. Of course, we need to produce those, those parts. So machinists, they will use HSM. And as factory planner, they could use Recap and else also factory design utilities. But we have a role for different people. It's not said that we cannot, we cannot all use all those. You don't have to be a master FEA. You don't have to be an expert machinist or you don't even know, you don't even have to know how to drive a torque. Uh, lift truck. You simply can use all those tools to give you an idea of where you're going. And those tools are so simple to use. Um, it's very easy. Of course, it's always, you know, the mantra, garbage in, garbage out. But it's easy to give you an idea if you're in the right direction. Now, I love the collection and I love this image. Of course, it's an older car. Uh, I think it could be a Volkswagen, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. What I love about this is that the tools in a collection, the assemble or the the, the, the assembly of, of tools is worth way more than just one part. 
Now, let me get back to the uh, example I was giving you. So the engineer could be working on a design or a project and will could share that with uh, one, of the, one of the colleagues to just analyze or do a sim on this. The person that's doing the, the simulation, the FCA, will maybe get back to the engineer so they can change something and, and back and forth like this. But because it runs exactly inside of Inventor, there's maybe no need for you to share. What you could do is start your analysis or start your simulation, get an idea of actual, you know, is your design over design? Is your design, uh, I don't know, factor, safety factor of, of 10? Or is the base displacement crazy? Do I need to use steel? Can I use plastic instead? So you can do it by yourself. Of course, along the, along the road, you're gonna share with a colleague and you're gonna ask that colleague, can you do a full run sim on it and seal the deal? So this is how we can actually use the tools to have a better design. Same thing with engineering. Starts with engineering or design and then it goes to mach machinists. Machinists will take a look at this, will do a little tool pack, can have, you know, is is put in is it saying in, in how we should um change the, those parts and engineers will modify that and send it back to machine so we truly believe and i do so even with my funny accent that this is our best inventor yet um i don't know if you know but uh, yesterday there was a uh, inventor 2019 uh, that came out so you can read the what's new you can read pretty much anything that's available with it and it's very interesting. Um, Inventor is very mature, but it's mind blowing to see how we can uh, take this a great tool and just make it even better. Um, so we're, we're sure you're gonna create your best work because this is our best inventor. Now, again, um, having a workflow that, that includes or that the centerpiece is actually inventor makes it so much easier because it's simple to use Point clouds. It's simple to do machining. It's simple to do um, to use your your 2D to 3D uh, design. Everything is included inside of Inventor. So you'll see. Uh, I'm going to focus a lot more on factory design utilities and the HSM aspect of it uh, today. So with uh, the manufacturing process, uh, what's great is that you always you know have the the latest and greatest and it's always in the mindset of the future making things. You know, how can we compete with the bigger and better, bigger, I don't want to say better, but bigger monster? How can we get our products out as quickly as possible? How can we, how can we learn from the, the usage of those products and how can we get a version two out in the field? This is a great uh, testimony from a customer that uh, was having, um, designing their products in house having simulation done by a third party. And then they quickly realized, well, you know what? Having the mass training can, we can actually do it in, you know, inside the company. We don't have to, to have uh, someone else doing it for us and having those, those miscommunication and whatnot. So if we can do all do it uh, together inside one tool, then it's easier to just change the design and go for, forward as quickly as possible. Same, same thing with this company, you know, designing a part, having it machined, Having the machinists, having the people in the shop floor, having an input on the design or how, how we should do those parts is, uh, there's nothing better than that. I mean, you pay them to, to, to you know, create G codes and whatnot, but, but also they have so much experience that they could tell you how you could change your design as well. All righty, so let, uh, let me jump into this. So as you know, we're gonna talk about factory design utility. And the first thing I wanna show you is, of course, the process analysis. Process analysis is, I, I don't know how to put it. It is the most amazing 2D software after AutoCAD. <laughs> so it will make you, in, in a matter of seconds, you, you'll see if your new uh, assembly line or test line or whatever you want to call it, your new factory line one input is going to be uh, efficient or not. So you have a source of products, you have one process, you have a buffer, a second process, and an end product. Then what you do is you go into your factory assets and you search for what you need. 
So uh, for that matter, we're going to look for a MESAC. So we're going to take this MESAC machine and we're going to put it inside of process one. And then we might look for something else. And like, for example, a, a pallet, and we're going to put this as a, as a buffer. So the thing is, we're going to get our source. We're going to machine those parts. We're going to put those parts into a pallet, and then it's going to go through a process number two and so on and so forth. So we want to know if that process is going to be um, efficient enough. Are we going to produce enough parts, components, products, according to this little process analysis? Of course, we can always change you know, the quantity. We can also change the downtime, the maintenance time. It is a great analysis tool. And if you look at it, it is inviting, it is inspiring, it is not scary at all. You can always click and, and add stuff in it. There's a lot of YouTube videos explaining how to use those, but also, also if you need training, you can always ask your partners. This is the best source for you guys to get trained, coach, or, or mentored on, on our product. So as I'm doing this, uh, I'm looking for the flow. I'm connecting all the flow together. This is pretty simple and straightforward. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to click play and then do a little sim. So as we all know in life, green is good, yellow not so much, and red is bad. So we get a lot of greens, but maybe not enough. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'm going to change and add a new mosaic machine to get me more, I want to say, parts to be done. I want to know where's my bottleneck. And so far, it looks like uh, this mosaic is a bottleneck. We don't produce enough parts. Um, so we're going to add a second one. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to connect it to this thing. They're all going to go to this uh, floor rack. And that's it. And look at this. Now, this is better. I love the colors that I'm seeing. And don't forget the red we're seeing. Red could be maintenance time. So it's just something that we're simulating. It's not, it's not that bad, actually. So what I want to do is I want to see reported this because colors are cool, but reports are better. And if you're like me, pie charts is the way to go. You can ask my wife. I'm a pie chart guy. I'm, you know what? I'm a pie guy. Let's put it this way. So you get a nice little report. You can discuss it with colleagues and you can change things among, uh, you know, according to what you've seen. What I love about this, look at this. You can actually output um, a, a drawing with this little tool, which is awesome because guess what we're going to reuse that drawings later on so you come inside autocad uh what you want to do is maybe open your layout and of course uh, bear with me the layout that i have is almost perfect which <laughs> in real life you're never going to get but it doesn't matter because you can draw you can do your layouts the way you want it to do what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this little thing and i'm saying now this is almost perfect because I'm gonna go into a, maybe a rougher zone. And uh, this, you know, I don't wanna uh, burn my punch, but we're gonna use Point Cloud. So I have this nice little layout. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use uh, the drawings that I uh, got from the process analysis. And I love this because in there, there's a bunch of little um, aspects that I'm gonna reuse. I can take those machines that come exactly from um, my block selection. So I don't know if you remember, I was just drag and dropping assets from my factory um, design utilities into that. And those assets, they have a 2D block attached to it. So it's pretty simple for me to just drag and drop them exactly where I need those, as you can see. Now, this is great. And this is actually more than great. It's almost perfect because it's easy for me to do my layout and the, because those blocks come from the same asset now i can do whatever i want and of course uh you know rotating them and placing them according to what i need but I, as you will see i will be able also to play with the operation and maybe add a little bit more stuff into it perfect so let's get rid of those uh lines that we don't need and next thing you want to do is you want to be able to um maybe generate also or see the operation in real life so what i want to do is i i want to um record my transportation how am i going to move my materials from one station to the other so as you can see operation one uh, you can see on the on the left corner raw material we have roughing finishing and all this so for this, I have a human that's going to carry it. 
but I can change it to a fork truck as well. It's not going to be the same price. It's not going to be as efficient or maybe it's going to be faster, but it's going to cost more or whatever it is. So I can change this. A conveyor it looks to be cheaper and more fuel efficient or you know, energy efficient, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse those and I'm going to drag and drop from my asset browser a conveyor line or a roller conveyor. And I'm just drawing what I need like this from operation two or station number two to station number three. And that's it. As simple as that. I'm going to fence this a little bit because we need to be um, perfectly sure everything will be secure. So I can, I can reuse lines from my drawings and just add fences or components attached to it. Um, I can see how much it, what's the value of it? Of course, of course, I'm using the value that's inside, but you can always change those according to how much you pay for your electricity or or energy bill. So you have those little dashboards that will tell you exactly what you need to know. And this is very interesting. You can change, as I was telling you, processing time, setup time, everything can be changed to give you perfect understanding of what's going to happen with your, with your new layout or your new line. So when those are done, I don't know if you remember, but the asset browser is exactly the same thing as the, uh, the process analysis because they're all interconnected. Now, what I want to do is I want to sync it with Inventor. And look at this. Um, this is sync. It is crazy fast. Now, what I did right there, I don't know if you noticed, but I just opened like a print cloud. I'm adding everything that I have inside my factory. This is my layout. This is the new machine. This is the new conveyor and everything. But the columns, Sometimes they're not perfectly drawn on the drawings that we have. So having a scanner over there and getting us a real um, aspect of what's going on with the, you know, as built factory, point clouds are perfect for those. So what I will do later on is I will reuse those. So we can reposition uh, our assets. As you can see, I'm simply going to move it like this. And as soon as I'm done uh, with the new position, the 2D block is going to change according to it. So we can sync back to AutoCAD as well. This is uh, very interesting and impressive as well. So when once you do your changes like this, you can sync it with AutoCAD, but also I'm going to show you a little bit something else. Uh, we can change our assets if I want to. I can go in there. I can edit those. I can um, add more, modify. This is a list of assets that we have. At uh, interesting they all connect to those connecting points as you can see drag and dropping them and they will connect to those gray points like this once i'm done and happy with it i simply double click one of those assets and i can change the dimension if i need to there we go. we're going to change it that uh, update them and of course because they're connected it makes a little bit more sense to just change them all Sometimes like a conveyor, if you change the width of the conveyor, you want to make sure that all of them will have the same width. So there you go. Conveyor is done. Um, the racking system is done as well. So we're going to save this, and I'm going to show you a little bit of something else afterwards. Now, we went from process analysis to AutoCAD to Inventor, and now this is Navisworks. If you know me, if you know my, my teammates, I'm a... Na Navisworks uh, fanboy. I love this tool. You can, you know, open pretty much anything that exists out there, but also you can actually do work with it. It's not just a launch box for your CAD file. What we, you can do, for example, we can do clash detection. And this is incredible. We can add Revit files in there, Inventor files, point clouds, and you're still going to be able to see clash detection like that. So this is a point cloud. This is not even a file, but it's going to tell you a component or that asset is actually right inside the column. Of course, looking at it, you could have seen it, but let's say your factory is, is crowded. Having a clash detection between a point cloud and your component is priceless. So it's a matter of just moving it out of the, the column and everything will be in sync afterwards. That simple. There you go. Now, I love point clouds because, like I was telling you, I had a perfect AutoCAD drawing in real life. Rarely do you get something like this. 
So Point Cloud is a fast and easy way to get a real life picture of what your factory looks like. So the simple way, simple, simplest way to do this is have a scanner sitting in, in, in your factory, just scanning everything. So I'm refreshing my inventor assembly. And as you will see, there you go, it just changed. Now, this is my little bonus uh, portion. It's called recap. And recap is to be able to modify or play or understand point cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to open a point cloud that's going to give me, like you see right here, my factory, my entire factory. But most of the times we don't need everything. We actually do it in 3D. There's something, some aspect of it that we might need but not that much. And as you can see, the interface is pretty simple to learn. What I wanna do is maybe I wanna look at stuff, maybe I wanna go inside of it. But what's, you know, the, the key of recap is to be able to modify those point clouds. Those, you know, those are real point clouds. You can see your factory inside of it. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna do a little bit of cleanup because there's a lot of stuff, you know, lights we don't need, Ceiling we might need maybe for the height of it, uh, those bins and machines and everything like this, maybe not that much. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply clean that up. And we have tools for that uh, inside of Recap. Recap is a great, great software. So let's modify this just a little bit. What I want to do is I want to take this um, and bring it down just a little bit just to have a better view. And I don't know if you notice how simple it is to just cut right into the point cloud to get get you a better view of what you need. It is very rapid. Um, so this is done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply maybe change the layers if you want, or we can also look at the scan location. So as you can see, we have three different scan locations and that big gray circle on the top right, this is where the scanner was. So because it cannot scan underneath, um, it's pretty easy to look at them. But we have a layer for that. Um, you can change the the panes as well. This is pretty cool. We're gonna select the depth of that plane. So we're taking a, f a few, I wanna say, um, we're sensing a few points in there and it's gonna, gonna give us that, that floor. And can we, you can simply remove that floor because it gathered, you know, it made it like, uh, it, it created a mid, point or mid plane of those points and now this is floor so you can create layers like this until you get exactly what you need and what we need in that case is simply the column so if i zoom in like this um as you can see this is a very complete scan and it didn't take long uh, i don't know if you ever did a 3d scanning of your factory it is pretty rapid and is you know, the result is just amazing there's no drawing the drawings are, are good for when construction workers are coming in, but once they're constructing or doing building their stuff, it's never like it should be in the drawing. And it's okay like this. So we're simply gonna remove all the walls that I don't need like that. There we go. We're gonna, we're gonna maybe put them into a new region or layer. Uh, I know my floor is not there, so I could put in there or I could be you know, adding a new region as well, if I don't want to delete uh, those points. But most of the times what I want to do is I just want to keep what I need. So we can see we have a lot of noise out, out there. We can see the four columns um, that we have. There's one there. So what I want to do is maybe I want to change my view and make sure that I know exactly what's going on. So let's remove walls. That's awesome. How, you know, when can you say in your life, let's remove walls or let's remove all these noise or horror game. So we're just putting that on, on, a, on a layer and we're going to remove or hide that layer or that region. So it's that simple. And this is with the collection. You can have a point cloud from pretty much any source and you can play and, and modify it as you wish. Now let's get into the cam aspect of this. All right, I have this great part that was done with another 3D uh, software. So I used AnyCAD to open that part and I didn't convert it. I simply said, you know what, it's the it's other CAD software part. 
I'm simply going to open it as is, and if there's modifications to it, I will, you know, update it. So I'm I'm making sure that my part is positioned or has a midpoint because what I want to do is I know I need to machine this. I want to create my stuff. I want to make sure that I control pretty much anything. Don't call me a control freak, but you could. Um, I want to I want to control stuff. So I'm simply going to draw around that part. Nice little rectangle, nothing too fancy, and I'm going to position it as it is um, according to the stock that I have. This is great because depending on, on you know, what kind of, of raw material that you have, you can all also make sure that you control that. Maybe you're going to do more than one part on one of your um, raw material. So we're simply going to use the uh, geometry of that part to simply uh, design my rectangle like. Now, this is going to be very important. You, when you do your extrusion, you want to make sure that it is a second uh, body. You don't want to cut or add to your design because next thing you know, we're going to machine this. And if there's no part to machine, you know, machining a rectangle is pretty simple. <laughs> so we have this little offset done um, that will give me just enough uh, meat. To cut that part now excuse my expression but if it sounds funny for you just so you know uh, it's funnier in french in my head uh so part is done this is all done in, in, in inventor and i'm doing this just to show you that if machining is your gig you love that and you live by it you don't have to know you know all the features inside of Inventor or all the advanced um, functionality. What you need to know is how to do a rectangle and create an extrusion and make sure it is a new bot. And that's simple. And then when we're gonna get into HSM, you're gonna quickly realize that this is where money is. You know, doing the stock is fun. It is perfect. That's what you need to do. But the real ROI is going to be inside of HSM. So simply moving this, having creating a stock, you don't need to know those features, but it's always interesting to know them. I'm going to put a little transparency inside of it because I want to see my part. So in there, it's easy to, to find what you need. So I have two solid bodies. I'm going to pick one and I'm going to just play with it. You can, you know, not saying I'm a control freak, but you can say it. Um, I love renaming my bodies or even my features, having folders and whatnot. If you saw my other my other demos, I'm kind of a I'm the type of guy that will rename pretty much everything. So let's uh, let's change the the appearance of that body to have something just so we can see through it. You know, it it doesn't have to. You don't have to worry about it. Just we change this, we see it, that's pretty simple. We know exactly how we're gonna put it because you know designing your stock is always better, but sometimes if you don't change the tra transparency, you're gonna put it inside your jaws and it's not gonna be in the right direction at all. So we want, we, we try to do this, just to make sure that it's positioned according. So I have uh, those nice uh, jaw right there, I'm put it right, right in there and you will see and this is an assembly, by the way. We created a part with two different uh, bodies. We inserted that into an assembly that's gonna mimic what I have on my machine. And we're gonna go into the modeling view. And I don't know if you know this, but we can go from assembly modeling view, we can change uh, the transparency or hide those components. Uh, and then I'm gonna go right into my CAM uh, workspace to show you how simple it is work so this is all within inventor i'm telling you again if you're a machinist all these steps that we just did you don't have to worry about it if you don't know how to do rectangles and extrusions that's not a problem because this is the cam toolbar with the cam um workspace this is where money is for you guys so i love the workflow that we have you know it goes from setup and you just follow what you have when you have when you see those tabs. So for example, I was having a turning, I'm gonna put it into a milling operation. 
know what it does? It's saying, oh, I'm going to do a million of all the assembly. Nah, maybe not. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we focus on that model and you just have to click on that model and that's, that's pretty much easy. The stock thing, we can, we can have the stock according to their components part or we can simply say, I want it from a solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick the solid that I created earlier. So this is why I was telling you, eh, if you know how to do rectangles and extrusion, might as well do it because you're going to, it's going to be helpful. So I'm simply using my stock from a solid. You can change the dimensions and everything. You can also add an offset to it and that's pretty much it. As you can see, pretty simple. Now, what's very interesting as well, it's the orientation. I want to make sure that my work coordinate system, my WCS, makes sense. There's nothing worse than having the C not in right direction and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, coordinate system and we're going, to, we're going to use those edges to position it. It's going to be on my stock. It's actually going to be on the part that I machine. So I'm, I'm simply going into my x-axis. I'm picking an edge, um, any edge, really. And my y-axis, there I go, like this. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but the WCS just changed. It's flipped, which is exactly what I needed. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the stuff like this, pick a point, there you go. Now, I don't know how much machining is done in your life. If you are a machinist, doing this is could take a long time, could be a long process. Having something that's graphical like that, where you just pick things, this is a time server like no others. And you don't have to do it manually, which is always great. Perfect, so my setup is done. First thing I wanna do, of course, is my facing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on face. It's pretty simple. I can always leave my cursor and have a little um, um, preview or little index of what it's gonna say. It's like a little help file, I should say. Uh, it's a pointers of telling me what it's going to do. So um, everything that you do, you leave your cursor. You can see we have a workflow inside the tool. So I just click on adaptive clearing. So you can go from tool geometry, height, passes, and whatnot. Tools, we can always pick the tools that we need. So I'm going to go and, you know, there's a personal library that you can do. Or we, we, you can use the, the tools that comes with the software and just modify them. As you can see, there's a lot of tools in there. And it's amazing, but it's perfect because it's what you need to actually start your own library. Maybe you need to modify something. Maybe you need to create, I don't know, the weekend job library, whatever it is. You see all the metrics and the system and the samples that has everything is in there. It is very, very complete. Um, if you don't have what you need, where you start from one and you just modify it. Now look at this we can change pretty much all the values. Now, this is very advanced, but I wanted to show it to you just to know that you're in control. Sometimes, depending on the software that you use for your uh, machining or your tool pack, um, it's gonna to be important for you to, to have that freedom of changing those tools. So, there's values. If, if you're uh, a little bit geeky like myself, I'm sure your wife is going to love that discussion. <laughs> you can always call me. We're going to have fun doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply do the facing. And the facing, it's going to, uh, it's going to recognize by, by itself uh, what it should do. But, you know, there's always a geometry tab where you can say exactly where you want the, the tool to go. So if I uh, show you the geometry tab, you know, this is where you have your boundaries. This is where you pick um, uh, the profile, the height, it's always important. You want to control when it's going to start cutting metal, how deep it's going to go. And as you can see, it's very graphical. So you don't have to, to worry about, you know, is it the right dimension? Do I need to measure anything like this? You see it. The colors are different. So you have exactly, and I want to say, quote unquote, in your face 
uh, graphics. So you know exactly how to where you're putting your stuff, and all those can be modified. Again, this is a little bit advanced, but it, it is perfect if you're a machinist. What I'm showing, you could also go with the default if you need to. Just like FEA, if you need to know if you're going in the right direction, use the default uh, numbers so you know if you're you can cut that that component or not. It's that simple. Now we can change again the passes. All little aspects of passes can be changed. And once you're done, you simply let it go, and you can see the toolpath. Now this is by using adaptive. Adaptive will make sure that your tool life will be maximized. Now this is how it's doing the spacing. I don't know if you know this. It just goes and goes and goes, always cutting metal. You can simulate all aspects of each um, action or cutting path. So the setup is awesome, but having you know the first path as being like a facing, this is great. Being able to simulate it to see how it will cut and you know, if there is any clash or if there's any problem, I'd rather have a problem on, the, on, my, on my screen where pixels are pretty much free than having a problem and just breaking the tool that's maybe a few hundred bucks. So we're going to do the rustering now. As you can see, using adaptive clearance, this is a tool pack. This is how it's going to cut. This is how it's going to go in and out of material. You can see the red and, and green arrows. You can always simulate that if you need to. You can simulate all the toolpaths. There you go. I love this. This is great. This is when if you're if you have a code and you compile something, this is exactly the same. Now you can go, you can see it cutting. You can uh, if you see it at the bottom, you can play with the speed. You want to know what adaptive clearing is? This is it. It's always cutting metal. Always. Making sure we use the best of the fluid as well. So removing material and then getting into clinical corners, making sure that everything is perfect. And this is all graphical. I don't know if you know this. We just pick on, on feature, click on the part. You can change the depth and, and, and whatnot, but you can leave it as is as well. Look at this. This is very very interesting and it's it's beautiful <laughs> of course it can, you can almost almost smell the coolant yeah. so by doing a simulation you know exactly how it's going going to react i'm going to show you a little bit more simulation uh also when we post the the uh, the, the code the g code you can also simulate that so that's going to be very interesting you see how i'm going out of the part there we go, going like this. Alrighty. So now, what we have on that part is pretty much the roughing. We have the exterior. We might need to do something that's going to be uh, kind of, you know, finish my part and do something that's a little bit better or more beautiful or almost done, I should say. So look at this. I, I just love that. This is like meditating for me. <laughs> All right. So once the part is complete, we've seen, we simulated everything. We know exactly how it's been cut, what's what's left of the material, and whatnot. We can look look at this at all the two facts. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a horizontal now, and I love a horizontal uh, because we're into the 3D milling. It's actually going to connect with the part and remove what's left. So on the 2D part, 2D um, features I'm doing on my part, I sometimes I need to, you know, click on the pocket, on the contours, on the face. But on the 3D milling part of it, all the features that I'm doing, all the, the, the steps that I'm taking, it will recognize what's been done on the part and it will remove what needs to be removed. That simple. Same thing with contour. So contour, I don't need to explain it to, to the component. It simply will look at this. There you go. This is a tool path. There's a lot of, of, of paths. Oh, 
um, tools going in and out. There's a lot of stuff in there. We can modify this if you need to. You can all you are in control of all the passes that that, that we have. Now the drilling. Drilling is fun. I don't know about you, but I love drilling. So you get in there, you pick a hole, and according to what you have, you know, it's going to. You can tell HSM to pick all the different, all the same diameters, and I love this. You know, this is easy. There's like six six holes in there. So let's pick the tools that we need. And uh, there's a bunch in there. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna, there's a drill, <laughs> always good to look at. And we're gonna simply pick uh, the hole. Now, I don't wanna pick all of them. I'm lazy. There's five other clicks that I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna simply go select same diameter and it's selecting everything that's according to the same diameters, which is great. Perfect. Um, and then we're just, we can play with the heights. We want to make sure that the heights are, um, you know, the drilling is done uh, accordingly. So again, it is very, very um, graphical. So we can always change this. You can, you've seen the cycles or the type of drilling that we can do. We're simply going to go drilling, wrap it out. Quite frankly, it's going to be like this. Perfect. We're going to go into the setup sheet. Let's create a setup sheet. And I love this again. It's for discussional meeting matters. Uh, it is great. So we have the WCS that you can enter manually, of course. And you have all the operations, all everything is in there. You can look at it, the different tools that you need. Um, I have a colleague that's putting links uh, for, you know, changing uh, the tools aspect of it and putting links to buy the tools if needed so everything is in there so you can keep this and uh, you save it in your file it's an acm file so it's very lightweight easy to to use and all the defense dimensions are there i go time is there uh lance is, is there i love you know food is very important you know, important when you're cutting metal there you go everything is in there perfect now i have my setup I'm going to simply post this. Now we have, I'm using a has right now, but we have a ton of post process machines available. It is unbelievable. If you want to have a look at it, you can always go on, um, on, on the Autodesk website and look for the HSM um, machines and there's a list. And if you don't find it, please get in touch with me. I, I will send you the link. So I'm, I'm Taking my G code, my ANSI code, uh, my ANSI file, and this is it. This is how uh, it looks, what it looks like. But, all right, the code is there. Beautiful, beautiful. What if the part that you have changed? What if someone did a change on that part and, well, you know what? Uh, your code is done. Machining is done. Everything is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to local update that part using the AnyCAD technology. And guess what? It's now a little bit bigger, a little bit thinner, and we have eight holes in there. So what you can do, you're not gonna redo everything. Please don't. What we're gonna do is we're simply um, going to look at all the the, the the different operations we did, and we're simply gonna go into setup and we're gonna generate. So what it does is it takes all the operations that we did one by one and is gonna you know, redo them according to the changes. So I know exactly that this is going further and my drilling, look at my drilling. I now have eight holes in there. So I took care of the, it went from six to eight and it changes everything. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to recode or, or delete or no, or reclick faces. It's just taking or under consideration that a part has changed. I'm updating my uh, NC file. This is a new code. I, you know, I'm just human. I don't know if it's actually changed. So what I can do, and this is where I was telling you, we can go black spot and we can go and look at all the different lines and what it does. See, we see it was very graphical that the the, the um, G code was doing the part that we have inside of Inventor, but you can look at it. So this is another sim. So if you see that tool going out of whack, 
for no reason, maybe there's a problem. Maybe something it needs to be looked uh, further. But look at this. This is exactly the part that we have. And all the way down to the trail. Awesome. So you can look at it, make sure it's good. You put it on a thumb drive or USB stick and wall. All right. Um, if you have any questions, we have about 14 minutes left. It will be my pleasure to answer them. If you replay this webinar in your head or talk about it with your buddies or, or your wife, um, just if you're thinking of something, please get us involved. There's a lot of stuff in there. It is very interesting. I'm passionate about all of this. I could kill someone just talking about it. Um, so let me know. Let us know. Get us involved. It will be my pleasure. I'm going to look into the chat window and see if we have questions. So recap. The recap that I showed you is pretty much the recap that everybody knows about, how easy it is to use the point cloud and just change it. The recap that comes with the collection, it's Recap Pro. You can use the cloud to process those point clouds. Or, and, or <laughs> you can also knit those point clouds together. So I don't know if you noticed, but I had three different layers in there because I moved my scanner around. So when I move it around, I create a point cloud. I have to put some of those. I, you, I'm sure you saw those, saw those before. Um, those are like big, white, bright white balls that we put some places that we know we're going to use them to remit or reattach those point clouds together. So Recap Pro can do that. It will take all those point clouds and it will create just a gigantic one so you can work with it pretty soon. HSM, the HSM that you see in Alt Inventor is exactly or similar. I don't want to say exactly because nothing is exactly, but it's similar to the HSM that we have inside of Fusion 360. And it is similar to this HSM you have inside of SolidWorks as well. So the workflow, the icons, the picks and clicks, similar. So if there's no other questions, my name is Mark. I'm a technical specialist from Autodesk. Uh, get in touch with us if you want to learn more, if you want to see more, and I'm going to give you guys back 10 minutes of your day. Thank you very much, and I hope to hear from you in the near future. Thank you.